Go. <laughs> Hello kids, welcome to my crib. Today we're going to be talking about the sulfur cycle and what it does for us. The sulfur cycle! Yes, I know. I'm excited too. <laughs> uh, first we're going to talk about natural contribution to the sulfur cycle. Some of those contributors include microorganisms and volcanoes. To demonstrate this, we're going to use this volcano right here. If we can get it. An eruption. So when this volcano erupts, it erupts. Ooh. It emits lots of sulfur into the atmosphere. the atmosphere. Once in the atmosphere, it is chemically altered and absorbed by condensed states of water such as fog, rain, and snow. Precipitation. That's correct. It comes back down in form of precipitation. When it comes down, it can either go back, it can be absorbed by microorganisms, go back into the volcano, where it came from, and recycle, or some of it seeps back into the hydrosphere or the waterways. Once in the hydrosphere, it is absorbed by other, by other organisms called, such as the pogonophora, right here, which are worm-like organisms that have bacteria called chemoautotrophs living inside their guts. Ew, germs. That's right, they have germs in their stomach. It's a symbiotic relationship where the chemoautotrophs provide energy to the pogonophora and the pogonophora provide a place to live. The way the sulfur travels is by once the, the volcano explodes, it puts sulfur into the atmosphere where it, can, where it spreads rapidly across the globe. In addition to that, it can stay in the stratosphere for one to two years and slowly seep out at different times in various locations across the globe. Although regions where it originally has an explosion or where sulfur is being produced will have high concentrations. What's the human contribution? Humans contribute ten times more sulfur than natural production. They do this by car emissions, power generation, but mostly by refining fossil fuels. Why do we even need sulfur? We, sulfur is an essential element used for carbon fixing in organisms as well as protein production. Um, however, it is never, never the limiting factor and in fact at the moment it exceeds the necessity causing um, issues such as acid rain when acid the pH, rain. Where the pH level is too acidic and it's making it unlivable for certain organisms making some habitats unlivable for certain organisms. And even with today's limiting emission policy, the rates continue to increase with population and it's destroying the habitats and eventually an ecosystem.